<laughs> Probably what we're going to want to do if we do a haul where we don't get any. I mean, there would have been hundreds right in here, so so probably this whole population there would have been thousands, yeah. Sit him down the bucket. Yeah, you want to look and see if you got any more of them. And I know there's a spring up above the bridge, so it'd be interesting to see if it's a long way to shake it. Is that anybody? Well, no, we probably need to do that just to make sure it's dry. Now, Brian said that we've never gotten them up there before. Oh, we have. Okay. Brian's wrong. Okay, good. Good. We have gotten them upstream, actually quite a ways upstream. Yeah, get, get the whole thing thinged up. There, how many are there? What's the count right now? 26 and 27. And then there, how many more left in there? We're actually. Yep. Man. Yep. Good. 30. 30. 30. And then you got some more in another bucket? Mm -hmm. Just acclimating them still. How long does that process take? Acclimating them? 928, 29, 29. 29, 29. Yeah. And of course, when the water's up in the ground, the ground, you know, the ground table in the water. This was the stronghold for Barron's top minnows, the best population left, and now it's been decimated by this invasive species and the drought. Um, but this work's important because if we hadn't uh, rescued these 64, this entire genetic population of Barron's top minnows would have disappeared. So now we've got these 64 individuals, we can propagate them, keep their genetic variability around in, the, in uh, Barron's top minnows, and uh, reintroduce them back into other springs that don't have mosquito fish. If we wouldn't have done this, in all likelihood all of these would have died and we would have lost this entire population. And that would bring this species one step closer to yeah, and if, if we had not done this, this species would be one step closer to extinction and it's not many steps away right now.